Right, so hello and welcome back to Books and Things and welcome to another video and today I'm going to talk you through my Victoba TBR. So Victober, if you don't know, is a month-long readathon hosted throughout the whole of October where me and the other three hosts encourage everybody to read as much Victorian literature as they can. So Victober, as I said, is hosted by me, by Anne from Beyond the Pages, Kate Howe and Lucy the Reader. I'll link all of our announcement videos down below where you can find out more about the challenges. So as every year, I have quite an ambitious TBR for Victober. There's a lot of Victorian literature that I'm very excited to read this month. There are 15 books I have on this TBR. I don't think I'm going to get through all of them, um, especially because some of them are really quite long. But I am quite excited to get to all of them, so we'll see how many I actually get through and we'll see how Victober goes. So this year, as every year, we have five challenges for Victober. The first challenge is Anders Challenge, which is to read a book by a Victorian female author and as a bonus one that is new to you. Then Kate's Challenge is to reread a Victorian book. My challenge is to read a Victorian book under 250 pages and or over 500 pages. Lucy's challenge is to read a underrated Victorian book from the same year as your favourite Victorian book. Um, and then our general challenge is to read by candlelight. So actually, looking through my TBR, um, I had picked out books for each challenge and then I had picked out some extra Victorian books I wanted to read. But actually, every single book I've picked, apart from one, fits into one of the four challenges. So I guess that other one, if I get round to it, I will just read by candlelight. And then all of my Victorian reading will have contributed towards my challenges. So without further ado, let me get into the 15 books that I'm going to attempt to read in Victober. So for Angie's challenge to read a book by a Victorian female author and as a bonus one that is new to you. So I have a couple of new female Victorian authors I'm hoping to get to this month as well as a few um, more established authors that I've read before. One new Victorian author I really am excited to get to in Victober is Harriet Martineau. Um, I really don't think that's how I say her name but we're going to go with that and I'm going to be reading her book Deerbrook which I have on Kindle and I'm really excited to get to. I have heard fantastic things about this mainly from Kate Howe whose channel will be linked down below. Um, she said this was fantastic and I believe it follows two women who move to a new town and what happens to them there? I don't know very much about it but Kate has raved about it so much that I'm just incredibly excited to get to it. This one actually will count to my challenge as well because over 500 pages. It is 656 pages to be precise and um, this is what I mean when I say I'm not going to be getting to all of these 15 books this month. Then I've also got on Kindle The Air of Redcliffe by Charlotte Young um, who is another female Victorian author that I've never read before. This is another book I've heard great things about um, from Kate Howe and also from Sean the Book Maniac and this sounds fantastic. Again I don't know very much about it um, but I've heard so many good things that I think it's going to be a really interesting one and I know as well that one of the main characters has a disability and I'm really interested in Victorian ideas around um, a kind of presentation of disability. I'll link down below a video I made on that last year. Something else I want to read by a Victorian female writer who I've never read anything before is this. Um, this is slightly different. This is a collection of diaries. The diaries of Hannah Colwick who was a maidservant in the Victorian period. She wrote very extensive diaries um, of her life as a Victorian maidservant. Like her diaries are quoted in like every single non-fiction book about the Victorian period that I read. Um, so I think it'll be really interesting to read her original diaries. I've had this on my shelf for a while and I've meaning to get to it for ages. This is sort of just over 300 pages but I don't know how long it would take me if it's going to be fairly dense and not like very readable because it's just someone's diaries. Um, but I'm excited to try this out this month um, so hopefully I'll get to some of it and if I don't finish it then I could like finish it off in non-fiction November as well. Though I seem to recall I said this last October and I still haven't read it a year later so we shall see. Then two Victorian female authors I'm also hoping to get to both of whom I have read things by before. One is Frances Milton Trollope who is the mother of Anthony Trollope, one of my favourite Victorian authors. I've read one book by her before, The Widow Barnaby which I really liked um, and I'm hoping to read Michael Armstrong Factory Boy this year which is 454 pages and I have on Kindle and is an industrial novel and I really enjoy a Victorian industrial novel. I believe it follows the life of a boy called Michael Armstrong who works in a factory and because I'm really interested in kind of industrialization during the Victorian period I think I would really enjoy this one. However I think this might be the third year it's been on my Victober TBR and I haven't managed to read it in the meantime um, between Victobers that I have managed to read something else by her so do I think I'll read it this year? I don't know. We shall see. Then one other book I'm really excited to get to, which I definitely think I will get to um, in Victober, is John Halifax, Gentleman by Diana Muller Crake. Last Victober I read Olive by Diana Muller Crake, and it was the first thing I'd ever read by her, and I loved it. It's like absolutely one of my favourite classics of all time. Um, 
it just completely astounded me so much and I absolutely adored it um, and because I loved that so much I'm just like desperate to read something more by the animal at Crake. Um, I've heard interesting things about John Halifax Gentleman, again it's not a book I know masses about but I just really want to read something else by her because I loved Olive so much and to my surprise considering she's not very well known and a lot of her books are not in print um, there is an audiobook on Audible of John Halifax Gentleman so I think I'm going to get on audiobook and listen to it and um, the book is 592 pages um, so again actually yeah counts for my challenge as well quite a long one um, and it's 23 hours but I reckon I could definitely fit 23 hours into Victoba and possibly at least start another audiobook as well so yeah I'm really excited to read more by the animal at Crake um, and I think this would be like a priority for this month moving on to Kate's challenge which is to reread a Victorian book there are three things I'm hoping to reread in Victoba and um, two of them are plays by Oscar Wilde because these are the group read-alongs that we're doing during Victoba we are hosting two read-alongs of the importance of being earnest and a woman of no importance and um, these will be hosted like through the Goodreads group which I will link down below we'll be reading the importance of being earnest in the first week of Victoba and then a woman of no importance in the third week of the month I love both of these plays a lot um, I have read them both twice before I might have read a woman of, of no importance three times before I can't remember um, but they'll just be a real joy to reread and they're also both really really short and um, they're both I think about 75 pages of this book um, so again actually they count for my challenge as well the importance of being earnest follows um, the lives and relationships of two men one of whom is called Jack and one of whom is called Algernon but both for various reasons pretend that their name is Ernest at various points in the play it's very very funny and I really enjoy it and then a woman of no importance um, focuses on a mother and her son and what happens when the son gets involved with people she doesn't really want him to get involved with and like things about her past start to come out A Woman of No Importance is my favourite Oscar Wilde play one of my favourite plays and it's very interesting and fascinating and quite feminist as well so definitely one I would recommend and I'm really looking forward to rereading both of these and then I'd also in Victober really like to reread some Dickens so I have been like constantly rereading Dickens over the last three years in that I hosted first my 18 month long serialised read long of Charles Dickens's Our Mutual Friend and then I hosted another 18 month long serialised read along of Bleak House and um, the Bleak House read long is finishing up as we speak but like although I have reread Bleak House and Our Mutual Friend by Dickens in the last three years and I did also reread Great Expectations at some point as well I just feel like I haven't read very much Dickens in the last few years because I did those two big read-alongs that really spread out the Dickens and I really just want to like reread a Dickens in a short compressed space of time and like really soak it all up and read a Dickens in just like a few weeks time I think that would be really great so um I haven't entirely decided yet which Dickens I'm going to reread I think I'm probably going to reread Dombey and Son which is my second favourite after Our Mutual Friend it's been about five years since I last read Dombey and Son I've read it three times before I think this will be my fourth read and I really really love it um, and I'm hoping I might get an audiobook of it um, this is quite a beast of a book obviously this counts for my challenge as well definitely over 500 pages um, it is yeah about 900 pages I'm considering listening to it on audiobook because I really really enjoy rereading on audiobook and um, the audiobook that I found on audible is 41 hours long so that's quite a long audiobook and um, I don't think I'll be able to get through both that and John Halifax gentleman in a month but I might do and if not I might listen to John Halifax first and then just see like how far I can get through Dombey and Son in October and then carry on the rest into November and finish it then just because I really want to read a Dickens and like fully immerse myself in a Dickens and I think Dickens works so well on audiobook because his books are sort of partly designed to be read aloud um, so I just think it'd be really nice to listen to a Dickens audiobook so hopefully I'll be read Dombey and Son um, I'm excited for this one. Moving on to my challenge, though I have, I realise, already mentioned several books that fit into my challenge that are under 250 pages or over 500. Um, so a few of the short books that I'm hoping to get to this month, which I think I will definitely get to because they are really short. This, this is Flatland by Edwin Abbott. I'm quite excited for this. I've been meaning to read it for a very long time. It is a Victorian book that is sort of about maths set in this weird 2D world where I think men are squares and women are lines. I don't know very much about it, but I hear it's very interesting. And Libby Stevenson, whose channel I will link down below, raised about it, so I'm curious. Um, this is very, very short indeed. It is 118 pages, so I think I can definitely squeeze this into Victober, and I'm looking forward to this one. I might like read this on the first day to give myself a sense of achievement. <laughs> then I also have News From Nowhere by William Morris. Um, so News From Nowhere itself is uh, just like 
227 pages but this also does contain quite a lot of his other writings um, so I'm interested to to read them at some point but I think I will focus on News From Nowhere this month. So News From Nowhere is a Victorian work of science fiction I guess or maybe um, dystopian or utopian I'm not sure which it is but it follows a Victorian socialist who um, wakes up one day in 2102 and the world has really changed and it follows what's changed in the world and the new world that he finds himself in. I think it's gonna be really really interesting. I really like William Morris like as a figure. I've read some of his lectures and I also like love his designs and his craftsmanship and his wallpaper like it's just beautiful so I'm really interested in William Morris like as a person and um, so I think it'd be really interesting to finally read news from nowhere. This is definitely a priority this month. Now they also have The Light That Failed by Rudyard Kipling and um, this I'm very intrigued to read. Last October I read Kim by Rudyard Kipling and I really enjoyed it so I'd like to read something more by him um, and this is I think just uh, just under 200 pages long so I definitely think I should be able to get through this. I believe it follows the life of a man who is an artist and who is going blind which I think will be really really interesting and again like I said I'm fairly interested in sort of Victorian um, representation of um, an exploration of disability so I think this is going to be a really interesting novel um, and yeah I like Rajar Kipling and I'd like to read some more by him so hoping I will get to this in October. Then on to two longer books I have for my challenge which are over 500 pages along with um, the few that I have already mentioned previously and um, one is Armadale by Wilkie Collins. This is um, nearly 700 pages, so quite long. I don't know very much about this, but I believe that um, one of the central threads in it follows a kind of um, fallen woman, which is something I often find quite interesting in Victorian literature. So I'm looking forward to Armadale for that. And also because, like I said, I want to read more Wilkie Collins. He's an author who I find really up and down for me. Like I've read some fantastic books by him that I loved, and then I've read some books by him which were a bit off the walls. This is probably not like my biggest priority this month. If I don't get to it, I won't be devastated. Um, and I have a copy of my shelf now that I borrowed from my mum. So I will read this at some point. And if I don't get to it in October, I might get to it later on in the year. And then of course, as with every month this year, I need to read an Anthony Trollope book in October. And that is hopefully going to be The American Senator, which is um, just over 600 pages, I think. So again, perfectly fitting in for my challenge. And hopefully I'm gonna be buddy reading this with Jenny from Bookish Shenanigans. I'm really looking forward to this. I won't lie, I know nothing about it, um, but now I've got to the stage where I happily go into all Trollope books knowing nothing about them because I love Anthony Trollope and his writing is fantastic and I don't mind if I don't know anything about his books, I still know that I'm really going to love them. Also, I assume one of the main characters is an American senator um, and in several of the Anthony Trollope books that I've read there are American characters and he talks very, very interestingly about differences between 19th century Britain and America and especially like cultural differences, which I find fascinating. So I expect there will be lots of this in this one. I should say, by the way, if you're newer to my channel and you might not know because you might not have heard me speak about this before, one of the reasons why sometimes I will say I don't know anything about this book is because I very purposefully don't read blurbs of classics because um, I find that blurbs on the back of classics or like online for classics are often really really spoilery um, because there's this kind of assumption that oh it's a classic so the plot doesn't matter which really frustrates me but it does mean that like sometimes you read the back of a classic and then it will tell you something that doesn't happen until more than halfway through the book and um, so I tend to avoid reading blurbs for classics now which is why sometimes my knowledge is just like gauged from me what I've heard so yeah anyway then for Lucy's challenge um, I'm gonna be reading Alec Forbes of How Glen by George MacDonald. <laughs> Lucy's challenge, as I said earlier, is to read an underrated book from the same year as your favourite Victorian book. So my favourite Victorian book, my favourite book ever, is Our Mutual Friend by Charles Dickens, which was published in 1865. So I thought I would read another book from 1865, and in my research I found that George MacDonald released a book in 1865. Now George MacDonald is a Scottish Victorian writer that I've been meaning to read for ages. He wrote a lot of work for children, as well as some for adults. Perhaps it will not surprise you to hear that I know very little about this. I've never really heard of this book before, though I have heard good things about George MacDonald, but apparently it deals with Scottish country life, which sounds really interesting. And I always enjoy reading Victorian books um, that are set in Scotland, Wales and Ireland, because the bulk of the Victorian books that I know and read, and a lot of the most famous Victorian books are set in Victorian England. So hopefully this will be a really interesting read as well. Then my final book, number 15 on my list, the one that doesn't fit into any of the challenges, is The Whirlpool by George Gissing. I love George Gissing. I've read three of his books before and I think Think they are amazing and I'm so excited to read more by him. I imagine, like many a guessing book, it is going to be a bit miserable, 
but with some really fantastic writing and really fantastic messages and moments, little glimmers of the possibility of happiness in amongst all of the tragedy. That is what I know and love about Gissing. Um, I believe it follows a young man um, and what happens when he meets a particular woman um, and possibly tragedy ensues. I don't know very much about it. Like I said, I don't like to read the back of classics, have avoided reading the back of this Penguin Classics edition. Um, but I think this will be an interesting one. I think this is just, um, yeah, like 450 pages. Um, so I'm hoping I'll be able to get to it this month. But if not, um, this is another one. I have a copy on my shelf. I know I will read it eventually. And because this doesn't fit into any challenges, um, if I do manage to get to this this month, this will be probably the one that I will try and read by candlelight for. Obviously not for the entire book. That would take me a long time. And also I mostly read on trains. And that sounds like a recipe for disaster. But at some point, if I can find the time, I will set up a little candle um, and sit with this book and read it because then it will be contributing to one of the challenges and that will make me feel satisfied. So yeah, hopefully, hopefully I will get to this this month because I really, really want to read some more Gissing um, and I haven't read anything by him for really quite a while now. And yeah, those are the 15 books that I'm hoping to pick up in Victober. I'm very excited for all of these. I'm sure I won't get to all 15 of them in the month, but hopefully I will get to a fair few. Do let me know down in the comments what you are planning to read for Victober. I'm so excited to see people's TBRs starting to go up. And of course, any fellow booktubers taking part in Victober, if there's anything that you are reading that I'm also reading and you want to buddy read, let me know. I'm really looking forward to all of these. I think it's going to be an exciting month. And yeah, hopefully I'll get a lot of reading done. And that is all. Thank you so much for watching. And I'll be back very soon with another bookish video.